Okay, so now let's take a look at another way of representing uh, equilibrium and understanding what the equilibria look like, which is looking at the best response correspondences and noticing that uh, we can actually represent equilibria as the intersection of those best response correspondences. So in particular, let's revisit the example we just looked at and uh, take a look at how that works. So in particular, we, in terms of equilibria in the uh, war of attrition game that we looked at, um, with these particular payoffs, we had um, two pure strategy Nash equilibria, one mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, where the row player stayed with probability one third and the column player stayed with probability three fifths. So in particular, let's take a look at what the payoff to the row player looks like as a function of their strategies. So if they leave, they get zero for sure. And if they stay, what they get depends on what the probability that the column player is staying versus leaving. And in particular, we ended up with an equation that the payoff to staying is minus two times PC plus three times one minus PC. And then we can look at the payoff to stay, graph that. So here what we have on this axis is the probability that the column player stays. In particular, if that's zero, then the uh, payoff to stay is gonna be three. So we start up here at three, and then as the column player stays with higher and higher probability, the payoff to staying for the row player um, goes down because it's more and more of a chance that they're gonna stay when the other player is staying. So we end up with this downward sloping uh, line representing the payoff to stay. And the payoff to leave is always zero. And so in particular, uh, what do we end up with? We end up with stay being the better strategy if PC is less than or equal to three-fifths. We end up with leave being better if PC is bigger than three-fifths. And we end up with exact indifference when PC was exactly equal to three-fifths. So the, in, in terms of their better uh, response or best response, um, in cases where we're less than three-fifths, they'd rather stay. In case where we're greater than three-fifths, we'd rather leave. And their indifference point is exactly when the column player is, is um, staying with probability three-fifths. So in particular, we can represent that uh, in terms of the best response. So we put three-fifths here. If we're looking as a, as a uh, mapping as a function of the probability that the column player stays, then the probability that the row player would like to stay is one if, as long as PC is less than three-fifths. It's zero when PC is bigger than three-fifths. Right? So they'd like to leave in this case, stay in the cases where we're less than three-fifths, and they're exactly indifferent. They'd like, they, they're willing to play anything, any mixture, in the case where the uh, column player leaves with exactly probability three-fifths. So this, what, what do we end up with? This is called the best response correspondence of the role player. Why is it a correspondence? It's not a function because it's not single-valued. So right at this point of three-fifths, we have lots of different uh, strategies which are optimal for the role player. Basically, any mixture is optimal at that point. So this is called the best response correspondence. The nice thing about it is when we look at this graph, it's actually connected. So it's moving along nicely as we move as a function of, of PC. Um, so the best response correspondence of the role player um, has this particular shape in this game. Okay, we can do the same analysis for the column player. Um, if you go through and you look at the column player's payoff as a function of what the role player is doing and so forth, we can do the same analysis. Here we map out as a function of PR, what's the payoff to stay for the column player. Uh, if PR is zero, then this payoff becomes one. So we start up here at one. As PR increases, this thing is sloping downwards and eventually hits minus two if we set PR all the way equal to one. 
The payoff to leave again is flat at zero. So what do we end up with? In terms of uh, best responses for the column player, we end up with stay being better uh, above, uh, sorry, when probability of the role player staying is less than one third. So stay is better in here. Then leave is better is the best response in the situations where PR is bigger than a third and they're indifferent exactly at one third. So we can go through, we map out the best response of the column player. It's similar to what we just saw for the row player, except their indifference point is now one third instead of three fifths. And that just represents the slight difference in the payoffs that we have in this matrix. We also have the best response of the row player as a function of what the column player is doing. So we have uh, both best responses and let's now put them together on one graph. So what we'll do is we'll keep track of the row player's probability of stay. So probability that row stays. And on the uh, vertical axis, we'll keep track of the probability that the column player stays. So we want to put both of these best response cor uh, correspondences on the same figure. And we already have the right axes, uh, PR on the horizontal axis and PC on the vertical axis for the best response of the column player. But when we look at what we have for the row player, we have these two axes reversed from what we'd like to have on this figure where we put them both together. So what we're going to have to do is take the best response correspondence that we calculated for the row player and just flip it so the axes are reversed. Okay. So all we're gonna do is take this figure and we'll just flip it over so that now we have the probability that the row player uh, stays um, as a function of what the column player is doing, but we're having this on the horizontal axis and this on the vertical axis, so we've just flipped the row player's best response so that we have them both on the same figure. So now we can superimpose what the row player's best response looks like with the column player's best response. So we have what the row player is doing as a function of the column, what the column player is doing as a function of the row, both on the same figure, and equilibrium points are going to be where both players are best responding at the same time. So what does that mean? That means we have to be on both of these best response correspondences at the same time. So the equilibrium points are points of intersection of these best response correspondences. So here we have three different points of intersection, one up here, one here, and one here. So we end up having three equilibria in this game. And indeed, they correspond to the equilibrium where the row player row stays, column leaves. We have the reverse, so column stays. And then we have the mixed strategy equilibrium in the middle here where they're randomizing with different probabilities reflecting the fact that the payoffs in this game are slightly asymmetric. So putting the best response correspondences on this figure allows us to see the equilibria directly and uh, find them just in terms of, of uh, looking for intersection points of the best response correspondences. Now, obviously this technique of, putting, of, of drawing this out is a little bit special in, in, in two by two games. It's quite easy to do. As we hit more dimensions, it's gonna be a little more difficult to, to um, do this directly, um, but conceptually it helps us understand what the structure of equilibria look like. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, a slightly different structure. So actually, one thing you'll notice in this game is that the equilibria are sort of sloping downward um, in the sense that uh, it's uh, sort of an anti-coordination game um, we should have one player staying and the other one leaving or vice versa and the mixture is somewhere in between that. Um, we can also look at a, at a coordination game and see what the uh, structure looks like in that setting instead. So let's take a, a, very, a look at a very simple coordination game. So this is a game where we have um, two technologies, say an old technology, which gives each player a payoff of one if they both use it, a new technology, which is the superior technology, gives each player a payoff of two. Um, if they miscoordinate and they don't have the same technologies, they can't talk to each other, for instance, um, they each get a payoff of zero. So very simple technology adoption coordination game. Um, we can take a look here at 
the payoffs to a given player. So here there's a symmetric structure to the game. So we just have to calculate the best response correspondence for one of the players, and that'll be enough. So we can keep track of uh, what happens to, um, say, the payoff to the row player as a function of the probability that the column player plays old. So let's let um, PC be the probability that the column player is playing old. One minus PC then will be the, the probability that the column player plays new. So what's going to be the payoff to playing old? Uh, the payoff to playing old for the row player will just be one times PC plus zero times one minus PC. So they're just getting um, PC. And the payoff to, to new, we've got zero times this, um, two times one minus PC, right? So we've got these two payoffs. We can graph those out. So the payoff to old is just PC. The payoff to new was two times one minus PC. So this goes down in PC, this goes up. Remember PC is the probability that the column player is playing the old technology. So what does that tell us? Um, here, uh, the new technology is better if the probability that the column player is playing the, uh, using the old technology is less than two thirds. Old is better if the probability that they're using the old technology is bigger than two thirds and they're exactly indifferent at a probability of two thirds. How do you get that? Well, you're just putting the two payoffs together. This is PC. This is two times one minus PC. Find the point where those two things are indifferent and you'll get uh, an answer here of two thirds. So that gives us a, a figure in terms of the payoffs. And now we translate in that into the best response. So below two thirds, new is better. Exactly at two thirds, they could play any probability on old uh, for the role player would be fine. And then um, above two thirds on the other player playing old, then old is better, right? So if, if the other, say the column player is playing old, then this is the best response of the role player. Okay. So if we put those together, we can put that together on the same curve. Um, here we've got the, the best response correspondence we just had. For the other player, we just flip it over across uh, the axes. We get the best response for the other. What do we find here? Again, we're, for equilibrium points, both players have to be best responding uh, at the same time. So we're looking for intersection points on the best response correspondences. Um, one up here, one right here, and one down here. So here's a point where they're both playing the new technology. So the probability that they're playing old is both zero. Here they're with one, and then the mixed strategy equilibrium is where they both play two thirds. Now here there's a coordination game, and here we see the, the equilibrium are basically um, uh, in, in a, uh, an upward uh, moving uh, situation as opposed to the downward moving situation we saw in the uh, anti-coordination game where they were trying to take different actions um, as opposed to this situation where the better responses involve taking the same actions. So we get uh, a, a sort of complementarity here, which is reflected in, in players either uh, taking both using high probabilities or both using low probabilities um, or using some intermediate probability where they both end up being indifferent. Now, in terms of payoffs, obviously, um, what are we looking at? We're looking at the situation where they're either both using the new technology um, so the probability of old is, is zero. Uh, then we get the payoff of two. If they're both using the um, old technology with probability one, then we're getting a payoff of one. And down here, where they're exactly indifferent, um, they're using the, the old technology with the probability of two thirds. Uh, then we end up with the uh, payoff of two thirds. So here we can actually talk about a ranking of payoffs. So the new um, one gives the highest payoffs to the players, the old gives an intermediate payoff, and the mixed strategy gives the <clears throat> worst payoff to the two players, um, where they actually only get uh, a payoff of two-thirds because there's a substantial uh, chance that they end up using, mismatching their technologies um, and uh, end up not getting any payoff at all. 